Hello, and thank you for clicking on this video where I will be talking about the integer polynomial learning with errors problem, which we studied with Amin Sakzad, Damien Stede, and Ron Steinfeld. Before starting, uh, let me give you a brief overview of our results, and to do so, I need to introduce an informal definition of both uh, search polynomial learning with errors and search integer polynomial learning with errors. In both cases, you are given samples of the form A, AS plus E, and in both cases, you must find S. The main difference is that in SPLWE, everything is a polynomial mod F, and is in SIPLWE, what you do is you substitute Q to the unknown X. So instead of having polynomials, you now have integers mod f of q, because you also substituted q to the unknown x in f. So they are very uh, similar, and we actually proved that they are computationally equivalent for a large class of modulus f. Moreover, on top of that, we give a one-way CPA secure public key encryption schemes, uh, and its security relies on the such IPLWE assumptions. Indeed, uh, the security of PLWE is already well studied and well known, uh, but the integer variant of the problem uh, is quite new actually. It was only studied in the worst case for one modulus, and there is some concrete security analysis, but uh, everything else is missing. However, a module extension of this problem was considered in one of the uh, second round NIST candidates, uh, which is called Freebirds, for this polynomial, which... And as such, inter it's interesting to, to see if it's possible to get the reduction we found uh, notably because it's a way to prove the security of free birds, but it's also uh, a way to, it's also, yeah, we, we paved the way for new uh, crypto systems based on IPLWE instead of PLWE. And it's interesting because you can take advantage of the security of PLWE, and at the same time, you can use fast large integers arithmetic. In the following 20 minutes, uh, I will first formally this time describe the, the problems, then we'll see that the difference between them is the carries. I will then state the reduction and explain how the public key encryption works. Before uh, stating the formal definition of the problems, I need to give you two tools. The first one is how to sample Gaussian uh, distribution over polynomials. It's actually uh, done by identifying the polynomial with uh, its coefficient vector, k. That's the only thing uh, we have to do. Uh, we first introduce the following notation for uh, the following act, act of sampling first the coefficient vector and then turning it into a polynomial. We then need a way to go from polynomials to integers, and to do so, we introduce the polynomial evaluation by first stating that if I have a polynomial with coefficients in minus q over 2, q over 2, I simply uh, substitute q to the unknown x and I get an integer in z. To extend it to zqx, what we need to do is take representatives of the coefficients of uh, the polynomial in minus q over 2, q over 2, and apply this recipe. Then, if I want to extend it to zqx over f, I simply take a representative of the polynomial which has degrees strictly less than f, and then I apply the previous recipes to compute its evaluation uh, in Z. Thanks to that, we are now ready to describe the polynomial learning with errors problem. So in all of the following uh, talk, I will be taking Q odd. F will always be X to the M plus one. 
But note, note that Q can be taken even, it works also, and difference F are available to us too. This is all done in the full paper, but uh, for simplicity, I restrict myself to these two cases. And we also need two Gaussian parameters. Then the PLWE problem is given this kind of samples, uh, compute the secret, where the secret follows a Gaussian distribution. AI is uniformly sampled over polynomials mod F. And EI follows also a Gaussian distribution. It's important to note that uh, sigma prime is different from sigma. Uh, that's necessary for our, our reduction. However, the standard case is sigma equals sigma prime. So how do we go from there? Uh, well, it's easy to actually reduce the standard case to hours by adding some noise to uh, get a different noise level and secret uh, noise level. To describe a first attempt at IPLWE, at defining IPLWE, we could do the following. Before we take any polynomial, we evaluate it. Before we compute the samples, we evaluate each polynomial and we get uh, something mod f of q by applying a mod f of q at the end. This is actually not the right way of doing things because we have more integers than polynomials and this creates a few problems. One of them is, for instance, that the support of the uniform distribution, of the evaluation of the uniform distribution, is not uh, the full set zq to the m plus 1. So it's quite problematic. Uh, and the right way to do things, it's actually to sample ai directly, uniformly, over zf of q. And we actually, comp we actually sample one more coefficient for the noise and for the secret until we are in uh, this range, which will be used as representative, as the representative's range for uh, ZFQ. So why do we, and we want to do so for the noise because we want the domain of the noise to be uh, bigger than, well, the, the integer ring. Uh, however, we may have some big rejection probability, so to reduce it, it's actually possible to just sample the first m coefficients and then only add or subtract q to the m with some probability. Because as soon as we add or subtract 2q to the m, we will always be outside of this range and first rejected. Uh, it's important to note that this is a different noise and secret distribution than the, gen than the original uh, de definition because, as I said, we want to get noise over... Uh, we want the domain of the noise to be bigger than the whole set uh, ZF of Q. So we've seen how to go from polynomials to integer. But how do we go from integers to polynomial? The idea is to write the QRE decomposition of integers, but to center the coefficients. Instead of taking uh, coefficients in 0, Q minus 1, we take them in minus Q over 2, Q over 2. Uh, with this definition, we can also decompose negative uh, integers, which is something we want to do. And then the, the, the map phi q is defined as the map which to an integer a maps the polynomial which coefficients, whose coefficients are uh, the coefficients of the QRE decomposition. Not only it has good properties because it's a good it's bijection and its inverse is simply the polynomial evaluation. So this is what we were looking for. However, Remember, we are working from ZFQ to ZQX over F, so that we do not quite have the right domain. But it's, it will be easy to fix simply by applying mod F of Q and mod F reduction uh, wherever needed. This is what we do. And we actually set, as I said, uh, this range as the representative range for ZF of Q. So as long as we are able to turn elements of this range into polynomials in zqx over f, 
we will consider that we can do it for zf of q. And to do it, uh, yeah, as I said, we simply apply a mod f reduction. This is still interesting uh, because if I take any polynomial, first evaluate it mod f of q, and then apply phi qf, I find p back. So this means that phi qf is surjective, the evaluation mod f of q is injective, uh, but we cannot hope to have bijections because phi qf has collisions, notably because we have more integers than polynomials. So it is the right notion, but it's not ideal either. And we will see that it's even less ideal because phi q is not morphism, and phi qf will be even less morphism, if I can say that. Uh, let's take an example. If I compute phi 3 of 2, I get x minus 1. It's 3 minus 1. Phi 3 of 3 is x. Uh, but if I add both polynomials, I get minus x minus 1, because I'm working with 3. But the sum of but the sum should be x squared minus x minus 1. And what's the difference? It's because if I do the school book addition of 2 plus 3, I get 0 minus 1. That's the minus 1 I get here. I get x plus x. I get 2x. So I get minus x, but I have a carry. And reporting the carry, I get the x squared that I found here. So actually, the main difference between operations for polynomials and operations for integers with a way to, to view things, it's the, it's the presence or absence of carries. As such, if we compute uh, phi q of a plus b minus phi q of a plus phi q of b, this is exactly the carries that happened in the school book addition of a plus b in the basis q. The same thing goes for multiplication, and we are able to bound the size of the carries. Okay, So it's at most 1 in the case of additions, but in the case of multiplication, we are only able to bound it uh, using the size of a and b, which, has some, which brings some trouble. But remember, here, we are working uh, from z to zqx, and we want to work mod f of q and mod f. So we define the same thing, but this time with mods wherever needed. And we simply have to go from the following observation. Uh, every time I want to compute a mod, be it polynomial or integer, I just need to add or subtract uh, a certain number of time, a certain quantity. So, in the end, I'm able to express the, the carries mod f and mod f of q as functions of the previous carries that I had. And all of that, so yeah, for instance, if I want to compute phi q of a plus b mod q to the m plus 1, mod x to the m plus 1, then I have two addition carries because I have at most two additions, two integer additions, a plus b, and then mm, plus or minus q to the m plus 1. And then I have a few additions, subtraction or subtraction or, of q to the m plus 1. In the end, we found the following bounds on the carries. And yeah, as before, it's constant for additions and dependent on the size of a and b for multiplication. And if I take a uniform, which will be happening in uh, the SIPLWE problem, then the second bound uh, can be expressed on depending on the size of b solely. And that's why we need a small PLWE pro, uh, secret we want this bound to be useful. With that said, uh, we are almost ready to state our reductions. And before stating the reduction, we need I need to give you the right tool for the job, which is the Rennie divergence. We won't be using uh, the statistical distance, but rather the divergence, because we have a pretty nice lemma, which tells us that if I have two uh, Gaussian distributions with same standard deviation but different center, 
then I have this bound uh, on the divergence between both of them. Divergence uh, has some pretty nice properties and the most useful of them for our case is the data processing inequality which lets us remove f in our bounds and the multiplicativity uh, bound which lets, which lets us handle uh, the case of uh, couples. So see, when we have a sample we need to deal with a couple so that will be important. And finally, the most important one is the probability preservation because it states that if E is an event, for instance, an adversary A wins a certain game, then I can lower bound the probability of it happening under Q with the probability of it happening under P and the Rennie divergence. So as long as the divergence is polynomial, we have a security we can have a security reduction. And it's easier to have this quantity polynomial than uh, if we use the statistical distance. So to give you the intuition of the reductions, uh, let us first take a look at how we go from polynomials to integer. We compute the evaluation in Q for each uh, sample, okay? Uh, and we give it to the SIPLWE solver and we get an answer that we hope is the right answer. And to get from integer to polynomial, as we said, we write as polynomials are integer by applying uh, phi qf on both components of each sample. To give you a, a rough and very high-level reduction analysis, uh, we have the four following points. The first one states that if I evaluate, let us focus only on this part of the reduction. Uh, if I evaluate my polynomials, it can be seen as an evaluated polynomials time the evaluation of the other polynomial plus some noise, where the noise is uh, the noise we had at the beginning minus the carries that we did not have in the polynomial operations. So uh, we need to check the, the divergence between the distribution of AI of Q and the uniform distribution over the whole set. Uh, it, it should be at most three. This is the first part. And then uh, we want to apply the previous lemma about uh, the divergence of Gaussian distributions with same uh, standard deviation, and this should give us something like that. And then using multiplicativity, data processing inequality, we should be able to uh, get ourselves out of trouble. But there are two main problems. The first one is that the divergence is defined if on, and only if we have some support inclusion as here and that's not the case in this uh, that's not the case here so there is one problem first and the second problem is that the the offset is actually dependent on the noise we have sampled so we cannot uh, directly apply the previous lemma but these are these are all technical stuff that we took care of in the paper. So it's just to show you that it's a bit more complicated than expected, but in the end it all works and we get the following result. Uh, if this quantity is satisfied, then SPLWE with parameters Q, Sigma, Sigma prime T uh, reduces to the integer version of it with Q, Sigma, Sigma prime and T as parameters so it's very interesting because there is no noise growth, no uh, need for bigger noise. This big equation uh, might seem hard to uh, satisfy, but it's actually easy if you set the parameters in this order. First, the number of sepals t, then the degree of the polynomial m. And from this point on, you have to choose uh, the first Gaussian parameter, sigma prime, such that m over sigma prime is small enough. Then you can choose sigma to make this over sigma small enough. And finally, you choose q uh, big enough 
when compared to sigma sigma prime and the infinite norm of f depending on what kind of application you have in mind from that uh, we also have the reverse uh, the reverse reduction and this gives us that both problems are actually equivalent and without any kind of noise grow so that's pretty interesting and from this we are able to to propose a public key encryption based on the search version of integer polynomial learning reversals. It's adapted from an already existing scheme, but we use it with integer polynomial learning reversals. And we must add some tweak to recover uh, the randomness used in the encryption. The keygen is pretty simple. We generate an SIPLWE sample and use it as public key and keep the noise and the secret as secret key. Uh, then to encrypt, we uh, compute the following quantity where the message is T E prime E second. In the following, we will need to assume for correctness that F of Q is prime. And if that is the case, when we have recovered T, since A, B, and K are all public, it then becomes easy to recover E prime and E second. So the decryption algorithm focuses mainly on recovering T. To do so, we compute C2 minus C1s, and we can see that it is E times T plus K times some stuff. Okay? And what we do is we compute each, com each coefficient of the decomposition of D uh, mod K. And if K times stuff is small enough, um, smaller than Q, for instance, then it will be erased uh, by this operation. And then D prime will only be, able, will only be equal to E times T. Hence, to recover t, we compute d prime times e to the minus 1. And then, uh, as we said, it's easy to recover e prime and e second. So, not only, so yeah, the, the scheme is correct for f of q prime, k small, and for the following message space, uh, where t, e prime, and e second are small too. And it satisfies the one way uh, CPA security which states that if I am given a ciphertext for a plain text uh, which I randomly sampled uh, following the following tail-cutted tail -cut, uh, Gaussian distributions, then it's hard to compute the plain text which was used for the encryption. To give you an idea of the proof, uh, we first replace A and B with an evaluated PLWE sample. So these are now polynom evaluated polynomials. Uh, using the decision PLWE assumption, it's indistinguishable from the uniform distribution. B is now is indistinguishable from uniform. Uh, but decision PLWE is equivalent to search PLWE, which is equivalent to search I PLWE. Finally, we notice that an encryption is almost a sample of the SI PLWE distribution of two, it's almost two samples of SIPLWE. First, uh, it's hard to compute the plain text back because it's hard to uh, break SIPLWE by assumption. Uh, the OWCPA assumption is something which is interesting because it can be turned into CCA2 key exchange mechanism in the random oracle model or quantum random oracle model using Fujisaki Okamoto transforms. Thank you for listening up until now and uh, see you.